to start off the day, um, I'm very, very pleased to have a very special guest for our keynote speech because um, he is somebody who is one of the most successful VC investors in the European, maybe even worldwide ecosystem, Dr. Christian Nagel from Early Bird Ventures. Christian has more than 20 years of experience. He co-founded Early Bird. He uh, IPO'd companies like Tip24 or Interhoop. He even invested in unicorns that were exited this year, like Peak Games, and he still sits on the board of number 26 and has invested in UiPath. I can have a very long list. Uh, he's also a very, very uh, successful sailor. So basically, he's a role model for me because I love sailing and I love VC investment. Um, unfortunately, he will tell us now how, to dis how our industry gets disrupted. So Christian, welcome to the rise of AI and please enlighten us. Uh, what is uh, the threats that are coming at me and you maybe in the future? Yes, thank you very much for the for the kind invitation. Um, um, I, and um, yeah, let me maybe maybe start with a, with a little anecdote. So, how, uh, how what why do we how do we why do we see um, the industry is 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 changing? Uh, it's it's mainly because nothing has changed for a long period of time, and um, we actually have been. And that was about two years ago have been um, called by a friend, a USVC, who called us and, and asked us, well, do you know this entrepreneur? He has a great idea. Um, he's from Berlin. You must know him. Uh, he, he's around the corner. And we said, we have no clue. And we thought we have a good network and, uh, and no things popping up and, and interesting uh, topics, interesting entrepreneurs who come up with great ideas. And we haven't, haven't met him. But this USVC have met him. And then that happened again. And then we realized, well, obviously they have something, what we are missing. They have support, uh, uh, tech support, so to say, and I come to this in a minute, what that means, what we are not have had at that point in time. And that basically triggered more, we have been discussing this and what needs, needs to change, what can, we can do to change. This triggered the idea of basically that we do, we, that, we, that we need to act. But before I tell you a whole story, let me start with with some some support on the on the slides, so to give you a little bit overview of uh, first of all um, how VC works, and many of you may know this, but there's a value chain like in, like in all value chains, and all businesses, and this is the venture capital value chain you see here. So basically, it starts with we call it sourcing, basically getting to know the entrepreneurs. Um, that's very manual. Um, this is mostly mostly inbound. Um, sometimes it's reach out. Also, we do like in, like in many cases. Um, then comes the screening. Then obviously, from the many ideas we receive or, or or look after, then we have to basically screen them down and and see what is a what is a fit. Um, what do we like? Where do we have experience? Um, where do we like to invest? What fits into our our strategy, investment strategy? So this is kind of the things which defines basically how we screen, what we screen, and and, and what we do. Then comes and everybody knows this who has found it. Then comes the annoying due diligence, um, basically where we try to find out um, any liabilities, so to say. Uh, we turn every stone, well, not every stone, but at least you, we we try to get a good picture of where we are, where is the company, uh, are the numbers correct, and so on, are the contracts, so to say, um, perfect. And then comes the closing. Um, after this, there's obviously much more work to do because it's just the start of a journey which takes a couple of years. Uh, and, and this more may, may case is many years. It's, it's rather rather more 10 years than five years. So it's a kind of long journey where we do then support the, the companies we have in our portfolio help them grow, make them raise the next round, then comes the next round. And um, finally, there comes the exit. And as you see, this process is, is very manual. Um, it's, it, it takes time, uh, sometimes annoying time, especially when it comes to closings, can take a long time. And we thought after this experience, something is changed or has to change over time. So we believe um, uh, also, with, uh, when we, if you compare where we, where we have in the past and where we see the future, we see the past as being pretty much pretty basically inbound oriented. So basically the VC, uh, I wouldn't say uh, kind of arrogantly sits in the office and waits for good ideas to come. Um, 
that's a little bit a uh, little bit over over uh, exaggerated here but this is exactly um, a little bit the picture maybe which which is in the outside and there's a little outbound so we sometimes reach out and try to try to get to know get to know um, entrepreneurs and, and and see what they're doing we believe this will drastically change so there will be basically it will be outbound so the money is looking for the best entrepreneurs and the ideas and not the other way around um, and especially in Europe, it will change. In the US, it has already started to change because there's much more money available um, looking for great entrepreneurs, great ideas. In Europe, it's a little bit the other way around. Now you have, we have basically a lack of capital. And this will trigger and, and uh, this, this change more to basically the VC, uh, successful VCs, they have to reach out to the entrepreneur, get to know them, build a relationship, and then uh, may finally find something which which is a fit uh, and has to be a fit from both sides, and then the investment may happen. So this is this is our clear belief, and also basically supported by some experience in the past. We 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 um, we, we saw now um, to do this in an efficient way um, because VCs have only limited capacities. So um, and we see. A deal universe, if we look into Europe, something in the range of 12,000 investments being made in this in the venture space. There are many more, more ideas out there. We believe it's in the range of 40, 50,000 great ideas out there, basically. Some find, find, uh, find financing, some not, but this is the pool, basically, which is out there of um, combination of entrepreneurs who have developed something. Um, and um, in many cases are looking for, for, for funding or at least to look for build the business and look for, in many cases, for support to build the business. Now, this is a lot per year. It's, I'm talking per year, so kind of 50,000 per year. Currently, we have in our database something like 12,000, um, which is also a lot. And our task is basically to find in this pool um, the best combination of um, us being a good partner and the best entrepreneurs. This is what, what we, we do. And obviously with, um, with this becoming bigger, um, it's complicated. And um, that's why we started basically to think about, okay, what can we do? How can we use tech to uh, pr help and support the process of basically of finding the right, the right ideas and also then helping screening them uh, in a way that we very efficiently come to, to basically combinations of the VC and the, and the entrepreneur being a, being a perfect fit. And what, I, what you can see here on this chart is basically that we try to identify uh, and how do we identify, and this is tech supported, we have developed our own tech in, in this respect now. We try to first identify the, 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 the best ideas and this goes via basically scrolling and identifying the sources we have web crawlers basically crawling uh, github calling product hunt um, we go through public registries like uh, hunter register company houses house and so on we take social media so we have a lot of sources it's it's more than 100 sources basically we are we're tapping into to um identify first of all um and this is what we do so then we know we know something we know the company we know the name we know we know a couple of other things then comes the next step um, where we basically um, enrich this data, where we start making this, this more valuable um, by, by using other sources um, like news, like uh, payment data, traffic data. We look into Crunchbase, into the investors being behind a financing round. Um, uh, and we look at PitchBook, uh, CV Insights, so we, lose, we use other sources basically to enrich this data. So out of these kind of just um, information about a company comes more information which are relevant uh, to us, to us in the sense that we um, basically have diff have certain criteria of what we look at. And this is different from VC to VC. Some like to, like to invest more in that sector. Some like to do more FinTech. Some like to do more logistic tech. Some do others. So. But this was very simple, obviously, then we have other criteria like which phase is the company in, uh, which geography is the company in, um, and so on. So a lot of criteria, basically, we fill into our engine now and start to enrich uh, the, the data by this, by information, which we then can, can use, basically, to identify the, the right, um, right companies here. 
And this process, with this process, basically, the, the outcome is that we know much more, that we have a much enriched profile of a company. So we already know much more. And this goes not just uh, into companies, it can be something like a developer um, publish something on, uh, on, on GitHub and um, see, see, saw some traffic um, jumps or something like this. Um, can be an app being in the app store, can, can be something like this, a very simple examples now, but just to show that um, these signals we take and then it can identify um, potential interesting um, investment opportunities for us or interesting ideas, interesting entrepreneurs behind these ideas. Um, so now we have this enriched data. And now the point is that with this enriched data, basically, we, um, we, we, we benchmark those. So we try to basically find out um, what, is, what is relevant. And for this, we do, we do take these sources and this is, an, this is where this algorithm starts to learn. So basically we say, well, this bench, this database is better than the other database. And we, this is a research study which was done at the, at the Technical University in Munich. And they basically compared different sources and uh, compared them and ranked them. So, and what you see here is the ranking of different sources in terms of how valuable are these information, how precise they are, how actual they are, and so on. So we start ranking basically the different sources we have to the to the uh, to the importance basically to consider them and make them relevant for our engine. And this is what we do: come out come with a ranking, and this is also learning basically because this can change over time. But at least you have. You have a starting point from which you can can uh, refine uh, the, the the importance of different sources and the the, um, the ranking um, relative ranking um, of those with regard to um, basically the evaluation of certain data points we we, we receive out of those um, data bases. So what what in the end it comes to to, to this to this metric. This is this is interesting to to understand. So in the end, you want to be um, and on the on the on the horizontal axis. You have the kind of the how efficient you are. Are you manual? Manual is hard hard to handle the data flow we have currently, or are you completely automated? And then the question is, how do you trust these 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 the well, sources I just mentioned, but how you also trust any algorithm? And um, obviously, you like to be very automated and like to be um, have have reliable, a reliable um, um, uh, outcome. The issue only is that today nobody really trust trust the engines. So you would um, always say, well, I rather trust something where I have um, objective control, where I have um, grip on the data, where I have seen it, where I have basically have um, must trustful basically um, source direct source, not indirect sources, and don't trust an engine which basically combines different data over time. And so this is what you expect, but you like to be basically in the right upper corner here, where you have basically a high efficiency, meaning highly automated, and you can trust the results here. And then, and we also refer here um, on the study, which is done on, on the Technical University of, of, of Munich, um, and which comes to, come to, come, came to, to interesting results. And, what this shows here is that um, basically you, you can trust the engines. So um, we have reached a state of machine learning and uh, capability of, of AI algorithms that you can start trust these engines. And this is um, basically, um, again, uh, relying on this uh, study done on Technical University of Munich. Um, and they compared basically the outcome of different investors in terms of if you give the investors the same set of companies, 10 companies, and the investors should choose the ones which are the best. And this is what we did here, or what, what they did. They basically, they did this and had basically um, investors choose among those. And then they also ranked the investors in terms of are these very successful investors? Is this proven over time? So they really did a lot of data, data analytics here on, on, on that end to find out um, how does the um, the investors, so basically us compare to what the engine would, would recommend. And the outcome is uh, quite surprising in the end. So the engine is as good as the best, the best investor, what you can see here. So you have in terms of accuracy and in terms of recall, 
we have we are at 80 percent here um meaning so to say that the best investor has an 80 percent hit rate on the best um, best investments um done and the engine um the xj boost comes to the same same level so also the 80 percent and this shows um or at least is an indication um uh, where you now can say you can trust somehow uh, the engines more than maybe in the past. Um, so that that doesn't mean that you basically the engine is um, taking the decision, but at least shows that the algorithm can support you uh, in terms of finding interesting according to your profile what you are looking for interesting investment opportunities. And obviously the investment decision still stays with the investor and. Um, is not being replaced by an engine but at least you can you can say well it's heavily supported and probably will be more supported over time so heavily maybe not as of now but over time will be more supported by an engine who um, gives you more transparency uh, gives you more accuracy in, in, in terms of what do i really look for and where do i find it and probably it shows you things you have never discovered before and um, and I mentioned this, um, so far we have been seeing um, something like 8,000 um, investment opportunities per year um, with the auto sourcing basically. So the engine sourcing, adding to this, we add this up to 30,000. 30, um, and this is um, just by the way, the Western European part of, um, of, of, of Europe. So it comes to 13,000. Now the question is, or the point is not that we, always try to achieve and get more interesting opportunities. The point is that we would like to also have support in terms of more efficiently filter this down to the one which are really relevant, which I meant the perfect matching between investor and entrepreneur. And this is also something we see being supported by, by or can be supported by an engine so that we in the end um, are not flooded with even more investment opportunities but it's being basically, we see even less or basically active deal with less, but those are more relevant. And that's a big difference from, from the past that you have um, basically uh, tools which can help you and source and scrape and so on to increase the, the number of potential investment opportunities, but this is not it. You can do this and there are other ways of doing this, but with a smart um, um, machine learning engine with a smart uh, basically implementation of AI algorithms, you can basically qualify this, qualify this to an extent that you find, again, um, much more efficiently and you basically be broad, you basically you see almost everything or have at least access to everything and the engine helps you um, making, making this, pulling this down to a more uh, size, which you can then manual go after and 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 uh, and focus on, which is obviously much more efficient uh, for for both. So it's much much more efficient for the entrepreneur, um, and also obviously much more much more efficient for us. Um, if you then look into the value chain, um, what is what is happening? So we believe that there will be a, a increasingly support on the um, on the sourcing side. You can you can describe it as as kind of we argument the VC so the VC gets something which gives us more um, uh, insights into what is out there where are the interesting opportunities and helps you and this is the next um, next step in the value chain which is marked with a with a with a with a check mark check mark somehow I wouldn't say this is completely solved but at least there are solutions you can build solutions we have built a solution which helps us also um, with the screening part of it. Um, we believe that with this will continue. We believe in due diligence. We see also something. Uh, we haven't um, basically uh, gone to the next step as, of, as early bird now, but we believe that it will happen. Um, uh, it will also be supported by an engine. Um, the closing contracts thing, thing will also just as a point, smart contracts will come. Why do we need to basically put this on contracts? Why is there not something basically as a kind of standard? Um, well, I think this will also become much more efficient. Um, uh, and, 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 but we haven't, again, we haven't done uh, any, any effort in this direction, but we believe this will come to also make these steps more efficient. Um, if you look to support for the portfolio um, companies, we have invested. Um, we believe that there also will be support with regard to 
competitor analysts, where are they basically? Um, so that also we see there that there can be can be very valuable um, use of of machine learning and 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 AI algorithms and so tools basically, which can support um, even further across the the entire value chain. So. Um, and we hopefully in, in the end also everybody will benefit from this so the entrepreneur who basically gets a better match uh, in terms of finding the right vc at the right point in time and also basically with regard to the process in terms of getting getting closing and, and everything faster done and so the entire decisions process process being much more efficient and then also more and better support in the course of the uh, lifetime, um, which is uh, obviously time-wise, the most of the time you spend together. Um, this is um, basically what I wanted to, to um, present here. Um, so, in terms of the use of um, of um, or the change, um, I wouldn't say it's a disruption of the VC, but at least it's something which which is a change, and we haven't seen a change for a long period of time. So, this value chain I, I presented is almost unchanged over the years, and. Uh, now we believe that this will, will change and will become much more efficient and hopefully beneficially, beneficiary for, for both, um, again, as, for, as mentioned, for the entrepreneur and um, also for the VCs um, making use of it. And um, we are not completely new in this. Um, the US basically gave us the final trigger to develop this. And now we are at a stage that we're really using this. And, uh, but this will be, I think, um, or we believe the norm for, for VC. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Christian, for being exactly on time. That was perfect. We have uh, six minutes left for questions. And uh, if I may, I would pick something from the chat. We have one question um, from Thorsten. Um, sorry, I have to read this. Kathöfer. Aren't you afraid that clever AI founders will understand the algorithm above all, make themselves valuable by tuning the data sources of the algorithms? Maybe provoking GitHub stars could be an example. <laughs> Well, there's always way to cheat cheat engines. Then the engines will become better. So it's probably it's a race always, like like everywhere. Um, and it's not so that we basically that we're blind tapping into something. It's not basically that the, that the algorithm is finally writing the check or that the that, that the that the contract will be automatically executed. I think that's not the case. So it's still something where we can where we can interact then and, and obviously find out and and, and uh, check whether it's uh, it's it's uh, it's correct or not. Um, it, I'm sure we will be tricked. That's 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 a given. So maybe one advice to the audience: if you want to get attraction by a VC, just change your title to founder, and everybody will jump on you. Um, and uh, <laughs> another question is: um, since you, you mentioned the picking phase or selection picking phase, um, there are some there's some data um, like market size. Would you also look for that, or is that something your analyst would do? In the um, so from the AI side, sorry. Yeah, I think um, well, the AI can help here. I think there's still a, a lot, lot, lot to do. I would say, since sometimes in some cases, not so easy to to grab market sizes, um, especially since we like um, ideas or or or, or products um, and developments um, which are not not have a defined market size. So um, this is interesting that you basically open up new markets. In those cases, obviously, different, uh, difficult to, to grab market size and analyze market sizes. But this is something we are, um, are we like somehow um, because opening up new markets is very interesting because you basically have no competition in these markets and find many cases kind of blue ocean type of things. So, but um, so we haven't made our mind how this can be basically supported by the engine. But uh, but uh, um, again, so I think we com can't completely um, uh, eliminate. Um, Okay, also is manual support and also support and within the VC, uh, but I think to a large extent you can optimize the process. What is your feeling like based on the current results that you have? And I think you started also this year, probably also before that, digging deeper into the topic. Um, what are the main drivers for for selection criteria? Is it the people where they come from, universities? Is it more the products so or the recognition on product hunt? What is really helping you that you can already analyze today? Well, it's always the combination of the, the entrepreneurs or the, 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 the people, um, the person uh, we, and we, uh, we like to get to know and the product. So this combination always. And sometimes obviously the person you can't, you can't uh, probably 
the engine can't help too much on the on the, on the person. Um, only maybe with regard to a background, is it a repeated entrepreneur? Has he been backed by others? So there is still still a little, little support which is which is helpful uh, with the engine, which you can use with the engine. But then it's about the product and um, good products basically. Um, they just show, show traction and normally ideally traction without spending a lot of money so can can you can see early traction early on the question is does it mean a lot uh, it can but it, it not necessarily but this is something we can we can also get support from from the engine basically to find out the uh, these um, these spikes you see and basically and take up uh, our usage of products this is something you can see and in the end it's a combination of um, of um, a fantastic entrepreneur who has um, has the right guts and has the vision of, of, of um, realizing something and, um, and, uh, and the product. And since this is an AI conference, um, can you shed some light what kind of AI algorithms or areas of AI are you usually applying at the moment? Is it more the NLP part where you have maybe it helps you discovering the right companies or is it more on the data crunching part where you automatically look for, for certain patterns? Um, currently, it's basically the, the first of all, it's the widening the funnel. And as we train the engine, because that's a manual part of it, basically to set the right, um, to write, uh, it basically measures and the right and, and to fine tune the, the relevancy of, of different parameters. This is exactly where we are in the process. So now we have just a very much increased funnel and now it's about basically making them more official and finding out what is relevant for us. And this is exactly we are in the, in the phase where this engine gets trained and where we, where we see early results quickly with the early wins you find currently in terms of um, making this more efficient and so basically guiding us to, to the to the right um, uh, in terms of spot on uh, the focus areas we we like to invest and um, and um, but this is exactly the phase we are in basically that the engine gets gets trained over time now with regard to our criteria so what are we really looking for in terms of which sectors which geographies and then obviously triggering down much more much more granular over over, uh, over time cool uh, thanks a lot christian uh, i think th there is a disruption coming i recently spoke to code you and they told me they have 30 million annual budget for data scientists and i think at, at least our fund doesn't have that um so uh, unfortunately we don't have this either <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we have two people um so so we're all getting there um let's see what happens thanks so much for for telling us some of your insights and uh, maybe we can continue this on a sailing trip one day um Absolutely. thanks so much for joining thank you very much